All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Lady Dane, and welcome to Conversations with Lady Dane. Let's have a conversation. All right. So, uh, last night for Ladies' Night, we was doing Let's Talk About Sex series, and we started off, but um, got a little sidetracked. We never got a chance to finish. Okay. Those of you who had came in from the beginning, saw I played two songs. These two songs to me represent how we see sex, pleasure, love, and how we, um, you know, how we see the two sides, you know, how one side, some of us appreciate one more than the other. Uh, hey, we like them both. Okay. Um, I wanted to get in, um, I'm going into what is the Kama Sutra. Now, most of us think of as a sex manual, different positions, but it is more than that. And I thought, who better to um, to uh, explain what is the Kama Sutra than somebody that, you know, studies uh, the Kama Sutra. Okay. So, as usual, we're going to cover our basis with the Fair Use Act. All right, here we go. Fair Use. This channel may contain content not authorized for use by its owner. However, according to Section 107 of the Copyright Act of the United States, the fair use of copyrighted work for purposes such as criticism, comments, definitely news reporting, for those who don't know, teaching, we're going to learn something new today. Scholarship or research, maybe personal research, is not an infringement of copyright. All right. Now we, we got our base covered with the Fair Use Act. Now, I knew there was at least two Kama Sutras. The original, because it's an Indian text, and the translation. But um, as you're going to find out, uh, there's more than we know about this. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get, let's get it started. All right. Here we go. So interestingly, um, I've discovered that the Kama Sutra it, like you said, if I have to actually explain it in the shortest possible way, Kama Sutra is about pleasure, not about sex. Okay, Sex is a very physical act that anybody can indulge in the act of sex. Pleasure is something that only the human mind can actually understand and indulge in. Pleasure is a much longer lasting thing and it's actually extremely good for you and it is something that actually takes you to a whole different height it's supposed to elevate you it's supposed to make you um, reach certain heights that you can't otherwise reach but what now did y'all get did y'all hear that <laughs> um that is not a sex man it's about pleasure and there's a difference between pleasure and sex. Uh, that there are two separate things. You know, someone's like, wait a minute, how can pleasure and sex be two separate things? Uh, well, let's see um, what she says about this. Okay, here we go. What do you mean by height? You mean in terms of human experience? I'm, I mean literally in terms of human experience. I mean in terms of elevating the mind. So this is what it was written for. Uh, Vatsyayan, who is the author of the Kama Sutra, actually says this in his introduction. He says that, you know, the idea is, so as we talk about it, we'll talk about how elegant and beautiful and refined this whole world is. It's nothing like we think of the act of sex today. And it talks about this refinement 
um, and this beauty in such a way because in ancient times they believed that everything had to start from the point of physical intimacy. So uh, actually I'm going to give you a little example of it and probably explain it better. Everything that uh, every time um, a king came to the throne, they would have a version of the Kama Sutra commissioned for their kingdom. So there's not just one Kama Sutra, there are thousands of them. And each time they had it commissioned, they believed that if a couple could share really, really good, mutually pleasurable intimacy, that means that the relationship would be stable. If the relationship was stable, society would be stable. If society was stable, the kingdom would be stable. Beautiful. So this was about the, the, the bigger picture. It was about, they literally believed back in that time that success in any part of your life, whether you were a warrior, whether you're an economist, whether you're a trader, whatever it is that you did, success in any part of your life depended on your success in your physical, intimate life. And eventually, if the aim is to reach God, all love has to first begin at the physical level before you can start to elevate it. So ah, some interesting stuff there. All right. Okay, so I'm beginning to wonder if there's some truth to that. Okay. Okay. From the sound, okay, the vision that's going up right now uh, um, between the uh, black men and black women, and the stuff that the manosphere, uh, red pill is, and all this stuff you're talking about, I wonder if they're not having much of sex in their sex life. Um, and some of them actually don't even care whether their partner has pleasure or not. If the woman is pleasure, as long as they get theirs. And that kind of selfishness, they're never going to reach the full level of pleasure because, hey, they're only about themselves. Pleasure is, a, is about giving it to another. And then and, and they, in turn, give it to you. Mm -hmm. All right. That's an interesting thought. So I guess that's what I mean when I say that, you know, it and hence it's not about sex because sex, the act of sex is on its own. It, it doesn't mean very much. It was about pleasure. It was about arousal. It was about desire, because, of course, in ancient times, again, we believed that the, the highest form of energy is the sexual energy. I mean, you're a sports person, you know that if you if you're out there running or doing a certain amount of exercise, it gets your metabolism going. They believe that when you have arousal, when you're in the state of pleasure and elevating pleasure, there is more metabolism in your body than even when you exercise because every part of your body goes into some form of activity. Your heart rate, right. your breathing, your um, hormones are being secreted, everything. And eventually, if you consider, um, this is where if you if you carry the, this pleasure to its final um, point, this is how you can create life. Yeah. Yeah, only God can create life. So, you know, this was considered the highest form of energy because it's that powerful. But, you know, these texts, whether it was the Earth Shastra, whether it's the Bhagavad Gita, whether it was the Kam Shastra, they were all written as treaties. They were written almost in scientific manner. And all science in those days was dedicated to God. So they're written in the form of hymns and poetry. And they're not really, even the Natya Shastra, you know, the, the book on drama and um, dance, they're not written for the average person to understand. They're written in metaphors. So there are commentaries that you have to read to understand what they say. So if you go back to the Kama Sutra, the only thing that makes sense to the normal reader who doesn't know about what the other metaphors mean, the only thing that makes sense is the little tiny chapter on positions because you understand what a position means. Mm. And that's why we've come to understand that the Kama Sutra is just about positions. We don't know what the positions are. We don't know why they were talking about. There was a reason over there for, for the positions as well. But yeah, so there is this point about it changes, the narrative changes. But if you don't even have the basic background 
of knowing what it was about you can't actually go back to that story for a modern man and a woman what are three separate kind of learnings that they can take away after studying the kama sutra the way you have just three learnings three learnings for men and three learnings for women if you have to boil it down like that okay <clears throat> okay that the um interesting stuff so those of you who have looked at a kama sutra um yeah i, I do I always get that um understanding that some people are are, are, are just thinking that it's a, a position book um i had found one i guess it was translation or breaking down the commentaries because i i could it took me can't find it again um it got destroyed so i was never able to um find it again um but it broke down a lot of the stuff there there was a lot of yeah there's a lot of poetic and metaphors for it but it also gave the reasons for the position um uh, how to get to that position why to use this position um uh which uh which works with uh, which body type and stuff like that different things you know all kind of different things like if the the woman is too shallow or the man is too big or vice versa all kind of stuff um but if you just looking into it thinking about sex you're gonna miss the bigger picture <clears throat> which is about the pleasure so what i'm going to tell you actually ranveer is that i'm not going to give you three separate ones for men and women and i'll tell you why i'm going to give you three takeaways but not separately and i'll tell you why sure. a lot of people also come and ask me um what about gay relationships what's the kama sutra say about gay relationships like i said it actually talks about pleasure so it talks mm. about what gives a woman pleasure and what gives a man pleasure it doesn't say that a man has to pleasure the woman or the woman has to pleasure the man and so on mm. so sure. the idea here is that we are talking about understanding pleasure for me the first thing that struck me was the fact that there is absolutely no bad language used in the book there's no abusive language if you think about our um sexual vocabulary all of the words that we have for our sexual organs are abusive words okay Yeah, until she mentioned this, I never thought about it. If we think about it, you know, you know, you know, a lot of our, you know, uh sexual terms, not just for our organs and you know, the act itself are curse words. And we use it to abuse each other with. So, okay, if we use it to abuse each other with how's it going to translate when you're having sex when you're trying to give pleasure to your partner and you use this this language that could just that could just as easily be used as abuse mhm mm you know uh, something to think about you know we go back in time they talk about all of these words with such utter beauty even the vagina for instance is known as the chandan mahal the clitoris is referred to as the madan chatri the umbrella of the love god and so on so i think that the words that you use start to also define your actions the moment you stop thinking of that as dirty and bad and abusive you your mind already starts to change in the way that you approach something right the next thing is that it absolutely does not permit any kind of violence 
So through the entire text, it says in a moment of passion, a man might get to a certain point where he, you know, he lashes out in a moment of passion. You can't do this. You cannot hit so hard because so-and-so king did this to his mistress and he blinded his mistress. So-and-so king did this and he hurt his mistress. You cannot do this. And constantly it says that you cannot use any kind of violence or aggression. And it Mm. goes so far. This is the first text that actually gives women a sort of equality, a platform of equality, and it gives women the right to consent. So it actually says that it is up to the woman to decide if the pressure or um, the, the passion that is being used is too aggressive. So he, it says that, you know, in a moment of passion, if your lover bites you too hard, if that love bite is too hard for you, tell him to stop. If he doesn't stop, you bite him back twice as hard till he stops, which we always think is a really cute way of saying it. But it's the first time that women are being given the right to consent. And I think. Interesting. And uh, it, it goes into a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. The woman get to choose, um, has the right to say if something is being too aggressive sexually or um, a a demand stop. And then if you don't have the right to retaliate, you know, by, you know, biting um, harder to get to until he stops, which could be, you know, as much as biting a chunk out, you know, if you ain't stopping, um, you know, but it's, you know, it's interesting to say that they saw back in the, those days, ancient time, um, women didn't have um, too many rights, but they saw that women had the right to decide whether the sex is too rough. The uh, um, uh, if he's if he's if, if he's being too aggressive or not. Mm-hmm. So, are you guys saying that? Um, I didn't do anything, blah, blah, blah. She's just saying that. That's because to her, it's a problem. It's either too rough, too aggressive, or she just plain don't like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you don't stop, she has the right to retaliate by biting you harder. You know, but that could also be taken that, hey, she can say the R word. You know, because you're not stopping. So that could be a way of biting back. You're not stopping. She told you to stop. She told you it was too rough. It's whatever. For those those blur, you know, so-called blurred areas. I think what it is, you know, or you so, as they like to put, passionate, you're not hearing her when she's telling you these things. So she got to get your attention. Mm-hmm. All right, let's continue on. I think that's amazing. The next thing it tells us is that men and women both had very, very different forms of pleasure. For a man, the pleasure is like fire. It's very, very quick to put to ignite. It's very quick to put out. It starts like fire. It starts down there. It goes upwards. A woman's passion is like water. It's her pleasure is like water. It starts here and goes downward. And like water, it takes very long to come to the boil. It takes very long to come down. Okay. And so it it kind of tries to express its education in such a way that men and women understand. Because he goes on to say, he says that men and women are left to their own. Their pleasure is never going to coincide because it's so different. So how do you actually go about doing this in a way that you both feel the same arousal, you both feel that pleasure in each other's company. And I think that it's just this idea of slowing everything down. It's it's about understanding that you slow it down because there are other things to do. The other amazing thing that I think is a takeaway from this, it goes out of its way to explain to men that women have a very different form of pleasure and the first time or the first few times that you make love if you are too rushed and if you if you don't make it pleasurable for the woman you will actually put her off it for the rest of her life oh wow so it actually okay 
that is even more um interesting and it is true you know if you don't make it pressure for a woman you will put her off of it and she's never going to want to do it again or she's never going to want to do it with you again uh it happened um um being too rough too quick um you're not you're not trying to uh, make it good for her. are you trying to rush through the steps to make it good for her? you know you know uh just play with her breasts a little bit kissy kiss kissy kiss and 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 rush through the foreplay and then try to get it in yeah you you would definitely put women off of sex that way and um it makes it harder for the next person if they want to have sex at all you can I've even heard of it turning women so completely off. They um, they went the opposite direction. They became lesbians. That's how off-putting it could be. That don't want to be touched by a man ever. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Either change your name or find some other... Uh, uh, write some words. I don't know if you're a bot or not. Okay. I'm going to just put you in time out for the time being. All right. But yes, yes, I've heard of, um, and I know of women that, as I said, the sex was so bad, uh, they turned they turn completely off, never want to be touched by a man again, and became a lesbian. Okay, and I'm not saying that it happens to everybody. Or it was a long time before she let somebody touch her again, you know, and th that took a whole heck of a lot of trust, you know. All right, let's continue. On. He tells you a man, it explains to a man how to go about it, okay. Mm. It then says that the most important thing, I mean, this is like a big chapter in there in the, in the, so the, you know, the Kama Sutra is made up of seven sections. Only section two deals with lovemaking and foreplay or pleasure. It says conversation is your biggest thing. So before you make love, before you even start your foreplay, what is the thing that you're supposed to start with? Conversation. So it says that the man must tell the woman's stories to make her shed her inhibitions, you know, start to get her desire going, etc. And he says, okay, at this point, you have to tell different types of stories. So you have to kind of tell her stories which are slightly gossipy or naughty, something that will get a reaction from her, basically. So she's supposed to say, oh, my God, you know, you didn't seriously say that or, you know, or, or whatever. So basically, you're supposed to get her to shed her inhibitions. After right. making love, Okay, so we said this uh, all the time that um, that to get um, women turned on, you got to work with her head conversation. Um, I don't know how many times Max and several and a few other people have said you got to learn to talk to the woman. It's it's not just you know um, it's part of the relationship. Shoot, just to turn her on. You got to start with talking with her and stuff like that. You can, you know, and, 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 um, and, and stir in the pot. Cause, um, as I said, women, uh, get turned on differently from men and to get her to meet you where you at, you got to bring her up there, you know, warm up, have a conversation, tell her stories, tell her about yourself. Tell her things about you, you know, as a way of getting to know you and turning you on and, and all that other stuff. That that much is, is definitely true. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not that I haven't, uh, you know, heard anything differently, but it is very, very important. Got to be able to talk to the woman. Whew. And I feel sorry a lot of you guys don't know how to do that. Well, they give you hit. Tell us stories. I say tell us stories about yourself. You know, tell, you know, situations that, you know, to get her inches, get her to relax with you. 
she say Lord in, in inhibition well you know she can trust you mm -hmm. and we're not talking about made up stuff we're talking about you know situations with you all right here we go let's get back in you have a different set of conversation because after you've made love but so before you make love you're supposed to have a conversation that's supposed to excite her after you make love the conversation is even more important because he says that the way that you finish this time will def will define how quickly she comes back to your bed next time so at the end of it you have to now tell her beautiful stories of lovers who come together and they make love and they're really happy that they made love because you have to convince her now that actually what the, what you've done is a good thing and it's a good thing for both of you so <laughs> it's actually really really um, it's impressive the way that he gets into the psyche of both man and woman and i think the most important thing i would like to say and i want people to understand this the kama sutra is not about teaching women how to seduce men the kama sutra was actually written to teach men how to pleasure a woman because in in the 300 and something ad men were not taught how to read. i mean uh, women were not taught how to read or write so men were taught how to read or write and hence this book is written for men and the patron deity of the kama sutra is not kamdev it's not the god of love and desire the patron deity of the kama sutra is saraswati the goddess oh, wow. of music and learning because it says that you can be rich you can be anything but only a man who is culturally really well versed he's the most desirable lover of all all right so what do y'all think of that so the karma sutra was written to teach men how to pleasure women how to pleasure a woman it was not um, it was not um meant to teach women how to pleasure men it was to teach men how to pleasure a woman so yes it's, it 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 is a, a sex man or treaty as like they say but it was to teach men how to pleasure women mhm mm all right so that was that was very interesting, wasn't it? You know, because we you know we hear sex manual, and you know we always you know it's about pleasuring a man. Uh, if you used to compare to how many books they have about how to please your man, and how many books there are to how many how to please your woman, the how to please your man outnumber how to please your women. Well, it's interesting that one of the first um, um, sexual uh, sex manuals was to teach men how to pleasure women you know all right <laughs> all right so let's see uh, all right all right so that was that was the indian text you know but that was one of the older uh, sex manuals and when I ran across this, I thought that was very interesting about it and how they believe that, you know, uh, to have a harmony relationship, uh, um, har harmonious family, then harmonious community and country was about being successful in your uh, sexual relationship. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so um, so this one I want to go to. I, I just um, took a little bits of it. Oh, hello, Charlene. How you doing? Yeah. So um, so let's <laughs> on the topic. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to get to it last night, but we got sidetracked. So I'm getting on it. I'm finishing it up today. All right. So, okay. So the next one, I wanted to get a little something closer to home. 
So um, this is in Africa. I just took a little clip because it's a, it's a little bit more to it, but I wanted just a couple of things out of there that I thought would be interesting. All right, so this is in Rwanda. Um, they're talking about a, a particular thing that's very pleasurable for, um, for women and that, you know, um, and, okay, you're going to just have to see it. Uh, and this woman, um, she's, a, she's a sexologist in Rwanda. Is she going to tell you about herself? Um, so I thought this was interesting, too. Uh-huh. So, you know, let's say, well, this, see, these are Indian. What about Africans? Well, you know, well, black folks might as well go to the original. Okay, here we go. Rwanda has become a world leader when it comes to promoting gender equality in politics, education, and for some, even sexual pleasure. I'm a married woman with three children. I'm a sexologist and I live here in Rwanda. Kunyaza is an ancient and secretive sexual practice originating from this tiny country. It's said to encourage female ejaculation and orgasms and although it's not openly discussed, it is well known. The technique involves a man rhythmically and continuously striking the clitoris and labia with his erect penis. I don't think people talk enough about female pleasure. <laughs> Vestine presents a well-known radio show in Rwanda about relationships, marriage, and sex. Female pressure, it's very important because we all deserve to be happy. Kunyaza, I believe anyone can, can do that, even white people as well. To a woman, it's so enjoyable. When the water is coming out, you feel like you're in heaven. You feel something you never felt before. In our culture, marriage is all about that. It's all about in bed. Okay. So, um, were you able to hear everything that they said about the Kuzaza? Kuzaza. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was a, a technique to bring um, a woman to pleasure. And, ah, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. And you see, okay, African who's, uh, who's supposed to be the... Uh, 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 um, uh, 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 male dominant um, society, uh, show, uh, not chauvinistic, uh, mis uh, misogynistic uh, um, um, continent. Uh, they concentrate on giving their women pleasure. You know, it's you know pride about you know you know to to teach um, your woman how to do the kuzaza. And stuff like that, and, and give her pleasure and stuff like that. Oh, uh, hello, Black Knight. Hey, what's going on? Oh, not much. I was finishing up my topic for ladies' night. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that um, we've become an overly sexual society, and it's causing a lot of problems with relationships. 
I think that men and women today are more distant than they ever were. And I think that because we've become so sexualized, there's no more love in relationships. And that's why most couples don't stay together. You know, and then it also it, it introduces the what have you done for me lately or what can you do for me um, mentality, which really doesn't have a place in the relationship. Nobody uh, really cares about love in a relationship anymore. You know, love isn't about sex. You know, love is about enjoying life together, enjoying each other's company, finding uh, finding very comfortable things within each other to enjoy you know it's about experiencing life with someone you know that's a beautiful thing you know it's not about sex you know sex comes into marriage yeah but you know that's really not what a, a, a marriage is based off so pretty much people have wiped the love out of sex because you got people going around now talking about not showing emotions you know people act like emotions it's some kind of black play, like you're not supposed to have emotions. Even though you're born with the ability to um, show or have emotions, you're not supposed to use it. So, uh, And so when you take away the emotions, you can effectively take away love because love is an emotion, right? So you can effectively take that away too. And so now you're left with just a sexualized version of a relationship which doesn't last. It, it lasts as quickly as somebody's ejaculation. I'm sorry, as long as somebody's ejaculation. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> Once the pleasure is gone and you no longer feel pleasure, or well, the relationship is over with. Okay. But, I, uh, you know, I think part of the problem is actually nobody is having pleasure in, 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 in their relationships. And if both people are having pleasure in the relationship, they're going to want to continue having pleasure. And they're going to work things out and, um, and, 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 and be more willing to, to try to work things out. If there's pleasure. I don't know how. It's not about. I don't right, know how. About, Wait a minute. I don't uh, know how people are having pleasure in their relationships when you got all these babies running around here. All these kids. Uh, you can make a baby without actually having pleasure in the making of it. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you're telling me that people that are having relationships and they don't have any any sexual gratification, any any uh, uh, pleasement in a relationship. If that's the case then why are you in a relationship with someone if you're not being pleased, if you're not... I don't understand that. That doesn't okay. make any sense to me. Okay. Um, either because you want to be in a relationship... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Yvette pointed out that birth rates are low. <laughs> okay. But um, some women are in because they want to be able to say, I have a man, you know... I, I'm in a relationship, whether they get any physical enjoyment out of it or not. They, uh, they, uh, they'll concentrate on other joys and just. Think, yeah, see, oh, we got to see, see, mm -hmm. black people, we got to stop doing all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to stop doing all of this fake stuff, this phony stuff. And then we're, 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 we're tainting things. You know, we're tainting what love is all about because. We're being selfish in our behavior, and in, and you know when things fail, we want to blame the institution of marriage. We want to blame love. We got to stop doing that. You know we're making bad choices. We're making bad decisions. We are exhibiting bad behavior. You know we're losing self control, and we got to stop blaming that on love and blaming it on the institution of marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I think what it is uh, also a lot of people. You're right. A lot of people don't understand uh, what it really means to be married. They have an idea, or they get it from a TV, or they get some misinformation. Well, 
that too. And they don't understand what it means to be in love either. You know, women don't think love exists. Men don't think love exists. Well, it exists. You just probably never had it. You know, you don't know what it feels like, you know, and I'm telling you, it does matter. It does matter when someone cares about you and love you. It does matter. It does matter. But people will have you think that, well, what's love got to do with it? Love can't pay my bills. Well, love ain't supposed to pay your bills. You're supposed to pay your bills. And what love got to do with it? Love has everything to do with it. Without love, you don't have anything. If your man don't love you, you ain't going to have him for long anyway. Or he ain't going to have you for long. If you don't love your man, you ain't going to be with him that long anyway. So without love, you ain't got nothing to begin with. Exactly. That's why either there's uh, marriages are breaking up or there's no marriages at all. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and love can't pay your bills. It ain't supposed to pay your bills. You're supposed to pay your bills. You know, last time I checked, love don't pay bills. People pay bills. Uh-huh. Yeah. Love is not in the bill paying business. Mm -hmm. Pay your own bills. Uh-huh. Okay. But do you think that um, a lot of these... um long-term marriages that they didn't have pleasure in each other? Yeah, you get pleasure when you... It's a whole different level of pleasure, man. When you really love somebody, you, it, it, it's pretty much pleasure all the time. It's sexual pleasure. It's mm -hmm. personal pleasure. You know, it's joyful pleasure. It's pleasure all the time because you're with somebody that you really love and they really love you. So it's always pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's always pleasure. It's sexual pleasure. Everything is pleasure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but if you think there was not sexual pleasure, that the pleasure would, uh, that you could be satisfied with pleasures in other areas? I don't know, but I guess I don't know how you separate the two. Like I said, if you really love somebody, there's no separation. You know, the sexual pleasure comes with the love that you have for that person. You're going to get sexual pleasure. There ain't no you loving someone and you're not getting sexual pleasure. That comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and and not just sex. Actually, it's even better sexual pleasure because you love the person. Y'all don't hold back on each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all let it all hang out on each other. So the sexual pleasure is even amplified mm -hmm. when love is involved. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But if he, if he's not, if, if, okay, if, one of the partners is not willing to try or is not interested or don't know how to pleasure the other, um, th there's going to be a problem, you know? Well, you know? these are the things that you need to find out before you get married. You don't wait till you get into a marriage to find out if somebody has experience or if they can get it up or if they know which hole to go in, all this other stuff. You don't wait till you get married to try to have those type of discussions. You got to find all that out before you get married. See, this is what I'm saying. People making bad decisions and they're blaming it on the institution of marriage. They wait till they get into marriage and then they want to try to find all these things out. Then when they get disappointed and they want to get a divorce, they want to say, oh, it's, it, you know, marriage ain't no good for nobody. No, it ain't no good for you. Because you don't understand marriage. You're the one that made all of these bad choices and bad mistakes before you got married. You're the one that chose to wait till you get into a marriage to start trying to find out all of these things. You should have found out way before you got married. So you believe so so you believe um that if you're interested in this person and want to make them permanent, you shouldn't wait till marriage to find out do they know how to please you sexual? Or they know what they're doing sexual. You well, that's what the well, that's what the courting that's what the courting process is for. You know, you court for a while, and when you court, you should get to a level of comfort to where you can have those kinds of discussions. If you if you're not, then you're not either courting long enough or you're not courting properly. Okay. Okay, so it's about uh, the discussion too. They should be having this conversation. And be comfortable with each other enough to be honest with each other about 
this- right, right. Yeah, exactly. If you're courting, right? If you're courting properly, y'all should get to an area in that courting process to where you're comfortable enough with each other to have those discussions. If you're not, you're either doing something wrong or you haven't caught it long enough. Ah. Okay. Well, okay. But they don't necessarily have to have sex before marriage. They just need to be open up enough to talk about these things. I'm just, I'm just asking. I don't know if you want me to answer that question or I don't get it. Okay. Do you believe, okay, uh, that, okay, wait, 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 let me, let me phrase this right. Okay. They should be, have courted each other long enough that they should only talk about, you know, uh, um, the sexual side of stuff. It's not so, you know, See, a lot of y'all, right, when y'all talk, I don't know if y'all have lack of understanding of the things you say or some of y'all are just biased and you want things to come out the way you want it to come out or whatever. When you mm-hmm. say things like only, you know, you put you push people into a corner oh, and you okay. don't give them a, and then you don't give them an out. You say, oh, should they only talk about it? No one's saying you should only do anything. Okay. When you say only, then you're forcing somebody to do something. I said that these things should come out in the courting process, that y'all should court long enough to where you're comfortable of having those kind of conversations with each other. If you haven't gotten there yet, you either haven't courted long enough or you're doing something wrong. Okay. But that's what the courting process is all about. The courting is the feeling out process and then the foundation to um, um, uh, if if, if you're both in agreement, then it's a prelude to an actual marriage. And so if you're going that far, then you should be comfortable to where you can have those conversations. Okay. (laughs) All right, I get it. I get it. Okay. Okay. Uh, interesting. So I, okay, I just was curious because I knew a couple that courted um, for a couple of years, a, a one year court, and, and then they lived together, but they didn't have sex. Right, well, well, that's something that. Well, hold on a second, Max. Your volume drop. Um. All right. Hi, dirty vomit. All right. Um. Okay. We'll see when we come back in. All right. So. So as I was saying. It, it was um, it's interesting that uh, in the continent of Africa, that's is considered male dominant, um, uh, um, misogynistic. That uh, they are about um, their women having pleasure in the bedroom. Okay, so let's get to the second part um, of this. Um, as I said, I'm just uh, doing little clips from this. Uh, here we go. Now we are traveling to the village, Nyakinama, to find out how the, the village has also, uh, make love how did if they know how to prepare themselves before before making love if, if they know how to romance and all that that's what we are going to do not all the rwandan women who are free to talk about sex but this, this group of women most of them they, they lost their husbands 
after genocide 1994, like because we don't have our husbands, they are open. No, no, sir, the Catojirichin to Trivujira, Kurkumogao, Abagorebas Rajiramazi. Abagorebo say, but did a mazi of Mugaway about the Guyanis. <laughs> but whilst kunyaza is associated with pleasing women, it is often practiced alongside. Oh, okay. All right. Ooh, ooh, thank you, Yvette. All right. So um yeah, um, um the Kama Sutra. Uh I don't know if you got a chance to hear that part where they said the the Kama Sutra is a is is a sex manual to teach men how to pleasure women. Uh, um a woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um so so um uh, the um, the elder woman in there. Okay, she was asked the question: um, uh, Can any woman uh, get wet? Or uh, they say produce water. And she was like, "Yes, if the man pleasures her. You know, he takes the time to pleasure." And uh, <laughs> and um, as I said, okay, they don't speak about it um, off because. Um, uh, heard that the married women who, who still had husbands, they weren't open to they weren't open to speak about it. I guess is it'd be disrespectful for her to talk about her sex life for her husband while he's still alive. But these women who were widowers from um, it, it, um their husbands got killed in the Rwanda massacre in 1994, they were they were more open to to speaking about it, you know. Um but you know, there's still certain things that you know. Hey, if you marry one, we don't talk about you and your husband's sex life. But um, earlier in the film, um, they know about it, they talk about it, and they believe in um, the pleasure of the of of the woman. Mm -hmm. And this is coming from, as I said, you know, when we think of misogynistic men or you know, or uh, chauvinistic men, is about it is about their pleasure, me, 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 and stuff like that. And where's that coming from? You, you talking to a, a country where um, where the men are the dominant? They is slightly chauvinistic, uh, is misogynistic, you know. But yes, they believe in the pleasure, uh, pleasuring of their women. It's not about me. They, in the sense that. They are able to pleasure their women. They can brag. It's bragging rights almost. Um, you know, that you're not a man if you cannot pleasure your woman. <laughs> uh, it is it, interesting. So, you know, um, so, you know, as far as these pumping and dump dudes in these countries, you are considered, in these countries, you consider pump. Because uh, no way you can pleasure a woman with that pump and dump nonsense. 
Um, are you not making her wet? Mm -hmm. And as you saw with one woman, Kate, she said if her husband had, didn't make her um, wet, or, or you know, or well, in this case, uh, orgasm where she squirts, but it didn't make her squirt. Um, she would kick him under the bed. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that case in mind, okay, I was coming across this other um, video. Okay. Now, some of it is a form, you know, use the masturbate, but it's also using pleasure in a woman. I figure, you know, maybe they need a little lesson on one aspect of pleasure in a woman. So, um, I went into this video on teaching how to, uh, okay, uh, let's see where it is. How to make, no, 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 no. Uh, okay, here it is. How to finger uh, a woman. I figure since there's, um, um, she was talking about, uh, uh, as she taught women how to uh, masturbate and, you know, and stuff like that and how to do this. Um, a lot of the women said they wish their partners knew how to do this. So she did this tutorial. And I think, you know, I'm not saying the men that comes in our channel need these lessons. But, hey, it wouldn't hurt to have a refresher. Maybe they might learn something new. They might learn something um, that they always knew. Or they might learn something a little different. Hey, take it to the next level. Uh, uh, step it up a notch, so to say. All right. Um, here we go. So first things first, before even going into the technique and the how to hygiene, this is something that seems so obvious yet for some reason, apparently it's not. I've heard from so many women that they felt so frustrated that a man had long nails and dirt between his fingernails and was trying to start fondling them down there. That simply is a big no-no and it's gonna be an instant mood killer. So if you know that you're gonna have a special date night, make sure one, to clip your fingernails. There is nothing, nothing, nothing more irritating than feeling sharp nails on the inside walls of your your vagina so make sure to trim your fingernails and also to polish them a little bit so there's no rough sharp edges next make sure your hands and nails are clean so before getting sexy go to the bathroom wash your hands and do this with the soap so the soap gets underneath your fingernails to make sure that it's completely clean. You want to approach your woman like you're about to enter a sacred temple. So just like you would take off your shoes before entering a temple or making sure that you're clean before entering her temple of her yoni, you want to make sure that your hands are fully clean. Now, something else that comes with that is that when you enter, Okay, so I thought it, at the at the most, at the least, this was most important. Uh, and, and women, pay attention to the guy you date, the guy you you contemplating um, having sex with, or your man hands. If his nails are too long, if his if fingers are dirty, don't let him get near your yanni, as she put it. Your JJ, um, your flower, whatever you you call uh, your um your private area. Don't, <laughs> cause uh, it's gonna open you up to a yeast infection. You know, uh, uh, um, uh, of some uh, some type. No, no, no. That's that you do not want. You don't want. Um, um, him going there, well, one long nails. Let's see, I don't know if that's saying something about a guy that let his nails get long, either he don't have women or he don't do that. Um, so yeah, 
Yeah, that's very, 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 very important. Uh, yeah. If nothing else, guys, take this away. Make sure them nails are cut and them thing and the nails are, is clean. Don't come near her. Just like you want to check your breath, you better check them fingernails. Ooh, if you got trash on the tongue, oh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, pay attention. You know, watch his mouth. I ain't never thought about that. Uh, okay. Okay. But, you know, yeah. So just like you, you be checking your breath and stuff like that, you better check them fingernails. All right, especially if you plan on getting any that night. <laughs> All right, let's continue on with the lesson, okay? Enter her that you also do so full of presence and respect. Imagine someone just poking around in your mouth. Like, imagine that right now. That feels pretty invasive, right? Well, for women, being penetrated is a very similar feeling. It's literally going inside of our bodies. And if someone is doing that without being fully present and really respectful and mindful as they're doing that, it can really make us tense up and not feel safe to relax. So you want to give her the feeling that you're fully there, you're present, you're honoring her, you're ready to pleasure her, and you're doing so with full presence and awareness. Now, before. Okay, Yvette. Um, yeah, I'm glad you, you check everything. But you'd be surprised how many women, especially young women who do not. They're so busy trying to please the guy that they're not checking. They're not, and, and they're not thinking about themselves, you know, especially really, really young ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I know a few of them. And. More often than not, they're not, they just, they, you know, they're doing, doing things to please the guy. They're not checking, they, um, you know, not checking them out. They're not, you know, protecting themselves or anything. Hello. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, who's in the, who's um, on our lesson part? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, as I was saying, I'm yeah, I'm glad you check everything. A lot of women uh, uh, do, but sometimes they had to learn from a bad experience. Uh, if we got any uh, Zoomers, Zennials, um, young Millenniums, that you know they they when they're young, they they all about pleasing the guy. They don't all the time think about protecting themselves, and that hygiene part is very very important. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I was burping. I said, "Excuse me." Oh, okay. All right. All right. You wanted to say anything? Were you? Well, you weren't listening. No, I just that? came back on. What were we talking about? Uh, okay, we doing a a a a going over <laughs> tutorial on how to finger a woman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the the next. That was the next part of let's talk about sex series. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It's to teach the men, you know, um, because um, this particular teacher. All right, well, we have to. We have to. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have to ask ourselves: Where did all of this come from? Uh huh. Did it come out of the Bible? Mm, no. So then, so then, Christians. What would why would Christians be engaged in such information? It didn't come out of the Bible. Well, if he's to love the woman like he loves himself, uh, since part of it is him loving himself. And part of him loving himself is to do things to explore himself. He should explore the woman also. Well, whose interpretation is that? Uh, that is my interpretation of love the woman as you love yourself. How about we just love each other 
and let that flow in it, in itself and discover things with each other rather than listen to people who don't know you and who 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 aren't involved in the same type of connection that you have with your significant other Mm-hmm. I think the problem is we listen to too many people give us these cookie cutter instructions okay and we have to and we have to understand are we being spiritual I guess it depends on what you're looking for in life right <laughs> Excuse me, if you're looking for the spiritual, if you're looking for the carnal, if you're looking for uh, balance, because you can't do both. Okay. I think it's spiritual. If um, you want to do things to make uh, it more pleasurable for your okay. partner. Okay, tell me, you, tell me. Your, um, your spouse. Tell me what part of sex is spiritual. The part that you express in love for each other. And what part would that be? That would be in the marriage bed. Okay. So, again, what part of sex is spiritual? Uh, the part where you love each other physically and mentally and spiritually. I said sex. It's part of It's part of the, the three strands. Three strands of what? Of a good relationship, marriage. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then why would God tell you don't don't fornicate? That's if you're not married. Fornication means two unmarried people having sex. Right. And so being fruitful is what? Being what? Fruitful. Uh, that's um, uh, creating a family, having children. Isn't that the spiritual part of sex, being fruitful? Um, no, that's a command. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're being fruitful, if he's telling you to be fruitful and multiply, then he's telling you to have sex and have children. Okay. So wouldn't that be the spiritual part of sex, having children? No, that'd be the fruit, the results. Well, if he wants you to be fruitful, and the result of that is to multiply, then that would mean that part of sex, God deems spiritual. The act <laughs> of think, having sex, think, the act I of think, having sex in order to produce a child, that would be spiritual. Uh huh. So who? So where is there in the Bible that said it cannot be pleasurable to be fruitful and multiply? Excuse me? Where in the Bible does it uh, say that... Um, okay, where in the Bible does it say that having pleasure is not mm -hmm. part of being fruitful and multiplying? Well, where in the Bible does it say it, it, it is? To be fruitful and multiply. I think God made it pleasurable, so we'll more be... Uh, where be does it say that multiply. it's... Where does it say in the Bible that it's pleasurable to be fruitful and multiply? Where does it say that it don't? It don't say it does or don't. But okay. God, wait, wait. God made things um, for us to enjoy. What makes you think he don't want a married couple to enjoy each other? Well, he said that and, no and, good thing and, he and would by enjoying uh, um, each other. He's well, he said, that we well, he said, multiply. well, he said no good thing he will withhold from us, right? Yeah. So being fruitful and multiply must be a good thing. So if it's fruitful and we're multiplying in marriage, then that means that that part of sex is spiritual. Okay. Okay, look. So now, 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 where in the fruitful and multiply does it mention fingering? Uh, that's that's implied as part of sex. No, that's not. You see, again, you see, y'all y'all putting your own interpretations 
Okay, no, on God's put, word, because you, you anything that's done in the marriage. Okay, bed okay, is stop, okay, stop, 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 uh -huh. stop, stop. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to being fruitful and multiply. Right? Is that what God said? Yeah, but there's nothing in there. Okay, no, 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 no. Isn't that what God said? Yes, he said be fruitful. So how how so how is that my own interpretation? Okay, that's not what I said was your interpretation. Right. So <laughs> so 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 I'm saying if God is telling us to be fruitful and multiply, which is basically I understanding it as this, have sex to have children, then that part of sex to have children would be spiritual. Okay, but there's nothing in there that says having sex and, and having pleasure in sex is not spiritual. Well, the as word pleasure, it's... the word pleasure was never mentioned at all. Oh, so says who? Okay, then where is it? Okay, uh, I'm going to have to take a while to research yep. that. Yeah, yeah, I need to find I need to see where that's at because when he said be fruitful to multiply, never said anything about pleasure. Okay. He never said anything about pleasure for the man or the woman. He just said be fruitful to multiply. Wait a minute. It gotta there it, wait, 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 wait. In order for a man to participate in part of the fruitfulness. He got to experience pleasure. There's no way out of it for him biologically. Unless I'm not he saying he don't. Back then. Well, I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm saying that God never said that. That don't mean, okay, it, if he did not meant for us to have pleasure, mm -hmm. we would not have pleasure in it. God does not make something without no reason behind it. He wants us to be okay. fruitful, multiply. He made it pleasurable for us to enjoy the making of the being fruitful, multiply. Do you see anything in the Bible where God said anything about fingering and foreplay? And... Okay, there's not. A Wait a minute, hold on. I'm not done. The Karma Sutra, <laughs> these, these, these other things, oils and candles and. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You know, I think there's mention in the Song of Solomon. Let me let me look for it. I know there's something in the Song of Solomon. Because there's all kind of talk about, you know, pleasure. And, now, and when you say the songs, the songs of Solomon, are these the words of Solomon or are these the words of God? Hey, is in there is it God. Well, that's not true. Uh-huh. Let's see. Let me see. So, Who wrote the songs of Solomon? God or Solomon? With the kisses of his mouth. For your love is better than wine because of the fragrance of your good ointments. Your name is anointed. Ointment poured forth. Therefore, the virgin love you. Draw me away. Okay, let's see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Who is he even talking about? Okay, this is the first um, song, Solomon's Love for a Solomite Girl. Okay, but those are the words of Solomon, not God. Um, if it's in Solomon, here, Solomon was a man. Right, and your point is? God the is point not is, trying is to that Solomon isn't. The point woman. is, okay, listen, you over talking me doesn't change the facts. Solomon is a man. He's not God. Those are the thoughts and ideas and words of Solomon, not God. Solomon okay. wrote those songs. And who you think um, put the um, songs in his heart? He did. Uh-huh. Okay, let me get to the next chapter.
Okay, if you think that they were not acceptable, I don't know why you're having an issue with with uh, um, um, a man giving pleasure. I have to a problem. Wife. I'm gonna tell you what I got a problem with. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I got a problem with. I don't have a problem with a man giving pleasure to his wife, right? Mm -hmm. What I got a problem with is what you're making the sanctity of marriage out to be. It's not a sex contest. Who, who said it has Hold on, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me finish it. It's not a sex contest. It's not a his and hers of sex. It's not a you do this to me sexually and I'm going to do that to you sexually. You don't do this to me sexually. I'm gonna, that's not what it's about. M Max, that's not what I'm talking about. Nobody said anything about when you go and when you do your vows, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the vows say for better or for worse. Uh, you know, you finger her, she fingers you. There's none of that. None of that stuff is in the vow. The, the Karma Sutra is not in the vows. Nothing about sticking your finger up your woman's vagina is, is in the vows. Nothing about uh, playing with your, uh, uh, you know, your wife's clitoris is in the vows. None of that stuff. <laughs> okay. See, so my problem is, but wait a minute. My problem is, is that many people are being extremely disrespectful to the institution of marriage. What goes on behind closed doors in a man and a woman's private married life is between them and God, not them and the rest of the world. It should be no business of ours what a couple is doing in their bedroom to pleasure themselves in their own private, in the privacy of their own marriage. Okay. We have gotten to the point to where we have become utterly ridiculous with, uh, you know, over-sexualizing everything to the point now to where it's giving marriage a bad name. People don't want to get married because they figure that their uh, significant other won't please them or they won't get enough sex. Get people talking about, well, I need sex three times a day, four times a day, and all this other nonsense. Oh, I can't get married unless somebody can please me for the three to four uh, times a day. That's ridiculous. Okay. All right. Okay. You don't want to jump to this. Okay. Um, uh, hey, Charlene. Oh, I meant to jump off. I was gonna say it sounds like Max has a problem with the uh, the topic at here. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I I don't know what the issue is. I said a, a marriage, but I'm like, okay, but trust me, you, you know, there's uh, I I do believe that pleasure is part of the marriage bed. I'm not saying it's the only thing that the, the but it is part of it, you know. I agree. I like this topic because more men should know. I'm, I think it's very important for women to get pleased in the bedroom also. It's and me. since it takes us a lot longer, as the was saying in the Kama Sutra, as was saying in the Wanda thing, we need... Um, for the husband, the man to do more things to get us where he's at. Yes, that's true. It a man is already. Don't really take. Um, we already know what it takes to warm. Up. It, it doesn't take. A, see, uh, see, a lot. see, see. This is the type of stuff I'm talking about, right? Now, look at what Yvette just wrote in the chat. Okay. Sex is marriage, and that's wrong. See, this is this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. Okay, if sex wasn't married, why are uh, uh, um, just about everything men talk about uh, marriage and, uh, and and sex and marriage? He's talking uh, uh, about it. Men talk about it more than women. They want women to be submissive. They want women to be this or that. They want okay. or they don't want them to be this or that. Y'all, y'all having a hard time understanding that. A lot of people don't know what they're talking about. And a lot of people have their own personal and selfish reasons why they say things. It doesn't mean that what they're saying is correct. Okay. Okay. 
Um, See, my yeah. whole problem with this, I don't have a problem with the sex, okay, but keep sex where it's supposed to be, right? Okay. Sex isn't marriage. Marriage isn't about sex. Now, sex happens in marriage, but marriage isn't about sex. Okay, if it isn't about sex, why are you jumping on here about? Okay, us so about so sex? so so if that's the case, because I have a problem with it being equated to marriage, and that's what marriage is about. Okay, if that's the case, then wait a minute. If it's just about sex, right? If that's the case, then nobody will stay together because as soon as the sex runs out, everybody will get a divorce. Okay. Well. Okay, initially I was nobody not- should ever get nobody should ever get married because at some point physically you're going to lose your drive. You ain't gonna be as pretty as you used to be. He ain't gonna be able to get it up like he used to be able to get it up when he was younger. Your bodies are probably going to change at some point if you don't stay in tip top shape. He may need Viagra. You may be upset that he need it. Or you may be purchasing it for him. If that's the case, then what? Then if marriage is about sex, then don't have children and don't do anything else together. Just show up, you know, do the hookah chuka and leave, and come back when you're ready to do the hookah chuka. Why okay. get married? Okay, I get. Just say, it's... look, I'm a hookah chuka person. I'm only here for the hookah. Chuka and nothing else. I don't want any kids. I don't want to go to breakfasts. I don't want to go to McDonald's. I don't want to pay for nothing. I just want the hookah chuka. Okay. All right. Well, Yvette says when the two become one, that is an act of sex. That's not. <sighs> I understand why she's saying that. She's partially right. She's not totally wrong about that. But there's another part to that. It's okay. not just sex. It's also spiritual. But she's partly right about that. Okay. All right. Now, I think what it, part of the confusion is you think I'm talking about sex and marriage. You're, th- you're talking about the hookah chuka <laughs> as a standalone. And trying to connect it to a holy union, which is spiritual to, between yes, you are between the spiritual no, between a man and a woman. I didn't, you I and the lady in the video are talking about the hookah chuka as if it's a spiritual holy union between a man and a woman, as it and it no, isn't. No, 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 that's not what she was doing. She was talking about pleasure. She was talking about, she didn't mention no marriage. She said, you're a, a, a man and a woman, your partner. She did not say anything about marriage. She was talking about. You're trying to, okay, this is what I'm trying to tell you, right? You're trying to connect the hookah chuka to a holy union. That's what I got a problem but, with. But that's, okay, the hookah chuka is part of the holy union. Not it's it's, 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 it's something it's something that happens within the holy union at yeah. some point. Yes. It's okay. not the holy union. No, it's not. We're not talking about the holy union. We're talking that. Right. So let's stop saying that. Union. Listen, I'm here for the hookah chuka only. Okay. okay. If that's the You're case, then, the if that's the case then why get married? We weren't talking about that. You're getting off topic. No, I'm not it's, getting on top of it because you keep trying to connect the hookah chuka to what marriage is all about. That's what I got no, a problem no, with. No, you keep trying to attach the hookah chuka to, to, to marriage. I'm sorry. I know it's not funny. You're very serious. But we were not talking about marriage until you came up in here and brought it up. Because it started on ladies night. Okay. We were arguing my, about my it on ladies' night, was, remember? Okay, okay. I was not talking about marriage. I was talking Isn't about that what it, but wait a minute, wasn't autumn nature talking about? Wait a minute, autumn nature 
We got into an argument with Autumn Nature about it, didn't we? You got into it. I, right. Okay. Like I said, we was arguing about it on Ladies Night. Okay. Look. Look, look, look. look. So now it just spilled I over. Just, I would, it just spilled look. over in, uh, into a conversation with Lady Dame. No, We're no. still arguing about it. No. <laughs> no. 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 I used an aspect of what the woman was talking about, you know, um, um, spicing things up. In your marriage life, in your ma- in your, in, uh, in you know, not being stagnant, and she was talking about you know you know switch position, have you know do it uh, uh um you know do it um anywhere in the house, you know don't just you know just settle you know doing the same thing over and over again he gets bored. You know, keep the relationship fresh. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right, well, he's gone. You ready for the, the next part of the lesson? Yeah, go ahead. All right, all right. Before you enter her temple, after you've cleaned your hands, you don't want to go straight for fingering. That's for most women a big no-no. Women work from the outside in. So first you want to make sure that she's nicely warmed up. So you can start with foreplay. You can start by kissing her neck, making out, pleasuring her breast, maybe going down on her, and specifically spending a lot of time around her clitoris. For most women, their clitoris is kind of like their fire starter. So it's the place that they most easily get aroused from and that's likely to get all of her juices flowing. And a pro tip is not to start fingering her until she's literally begging you to penetrate her. That is a very good point to wait for. Okay, I'm back. And it's going to feel so much better for her and also it's going to be such a big turn on for you. So really take your time. Don't rush to penetrate her, but caress her breast her nipples, her clitoris, and wait until you can tell that she's begging you to enter her. All right, look. Hello? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, look. First of all, uh, um, Dirty Vomit, um, Yvette is wrong. That is not the definition of marriage. Okay, sex is not the definition of marriage. And here's another thing. Okay, since you don't have a problem. Okay, so are you saying a married couple who's taking their vows, should they have a problem while they're taking their vows with the song doing the butt playing in the background? Did you hear the question? Uh, 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 repeat that. I don't think I quite heard you. If you have a married couple getting married while taking their vows, then they shouldn't have a problem with the song doing the butt playing in the background while they're taking their vows, right? Um, if that's what they want. <laughs> well, should that be playing in the background? Hey, it's, if the bride wants that playing in the background, then yeah. So <laughs> you're saying that it's okay for a song called Doing the Butt to be playing in the background while you're taking your vows before God. If that is what you want, yes. While you're taking your vows before God. Doing Uh, the butt. Yeah, it's not doing it in the butt, it's doing the butt. I said doing the butt, I didn't say doing it. So... You're taking it, okay, would you take this woman to be over there doing the butt? Hey! Yeah. Are you usually, kidding me? Hey, there's not usually music playing in the background, but yeah, if that's what you want, if that's what you want. Later, so, so, okay, so you're saying that you have no respect for the institution of marriage whatsoever. Hey, the institution you of marriage. You don't even care about marriage. getting married because you're sitting up there saying that while you're going to take your sacred vows before God, you're going to have a song blasting 
called doing the butt. No, no, no. It's going to be playing quietly in the background. And How is it playing say, quietly? Wait, wait, wait. If it's playing all, quietly in the background, it should be playing at all. First of all, it's not our business. That's between them and God. I'm I'm posing the scenario. Oh, marriage is between the three of them. It's between I'm posing men, a, I'm posing I'm posing a uh, scenario here. I know you are, and I'm telling you so, that's so, not about business. That's between so, them and God. How is it not any of our business? It's a scenario. Um, it's not. This is a this it's is just a a, I'm saying this is a marriage between those two people and God. We don't have, we just witnessing them taking their vows. Now, unless we got some evidence besides that song. Of well, you bet Dirty Varmint said married. that you said the definition of marriage is sex. No. That's what I Dirty Varmint said. I'm, not, I'm talking to Yvette. Yeah. That's what Dirty Varmint said. He said, you said the definition of marriage is sex. And that's not true. Um, all right. So you're saying that. If they want to play doing the butt in the background while they're taking their vows, you okay with that? Yeah, that's between them. That has nothing to do with me. All I'm there is a witness to them getting married. The only time I should say anything if so I So you so 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 you had a marriage and you watching two people get married mm -hmm. and they're playing doing the butt. Hey, sex, say sex, say while they're taking their vows. You don't have a problem with that? That wouldn't give you pause? <laughs> it'll, it'll make it something interesting to talk about. I'll be you like, gotta be I can't believe they're playing that. See, no, you see that's it, the problem right there. That's the problem right there. You don't have do any it. respect. You don't have any respect whatsoever no. for no, no, the no. spiritual no, no, no. institution okay. of marriage. Um, um, Max, Max, me having a say on whether they play that song in the background, while they're taking their vows, it's like me saying I have the right to be in their bed when they're having sex. I would get up and walk out. Well, okay, then get up and walk out. But because I would be, I, I would be, mm -hmm. I would be offended. Okay, but that, but it is a marriage between them, not you. Yeah, you can walk out. You're free to walk That's, out. What you, does that you, mean? What, what what does that even mean? Um. That marriage is about <clears throat> those three. It's not whatever. Men, it's not about what. About. First of all, mm -hmm. it's not about whatever we want to make it about. It's about a, it's a holy union. God made it about something, not us. Yeah. Not a holy union between them, not us and them. Well, how holy is the union if you have doing the butt playing while you're taking your sacred vows before God? How holy is that? That's between them and God. If I'm not God talking about who was between. I'm just telling you. I'm asking you, how holy is that? Is I mean, we do know as, what the word holy. We do know what the word holy mean, don't we? Yeah, it's, it's holy. Okay, so as, so 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 so, how holy is it if you're taking your sacred vows before God, right? And you got doing the bug playing while you doing it. That don't sound, uh, you know, holy at all to me. Okay, nobody said anything about the vows being holy. First I'm of not all, talking about the, the, the thing is they're taking a vow before God. The fact that they choose to play so you supposed to block out is between. Okay, them. so okay, so if you got doing the bug playing. And you got people twerking and stripping. You're supposed to ignore all of that? First of all, no. Okay, look. They, then they're not doing their job as a witness. When you add a wedding, you dare to witness the wedding. Okay, so, okay, so you don't mind doing the butt playing, but if the twerking and the, and the, and the uh, stripping get to going on, that's where you draw the line? Okay. They are supposed to witness, be a witness to the wedding. They can party and do all that at the uh, um, the reception. They can do all that at the reception, um, which is probably going to happen at the reception. So I don't think I don't it's understand in the church. But I don't understand you. I, I don't understand now that you're saying because we're doing twerking and stripping. Now you got a problem with it, but you didn't have a problem when doing the butt was playing. 
Okay, because, okay, if they chose to play that quietly in the background and there's a church willing to let them do it, that's between them A church God. is willing to let them do Wow. Well, uh, 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 since you seem to be offended, most of the time people get offended by stuff like that if it's in a Why church. Why aren't you offended? Because, first of all, it's a scenario I don't think it's really going to happen. And if it does, they're not going to be having it at the church. And as I said, it's between them and uh, and, and God. I, <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Okay, now I forgot what she was talking about in the video. Okay, let's see. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, now I remember. She was talking about uh, don't be quick to do the fingering. You know, uh, do everything else first until she's she she really, really wants to be, uh, uh, begging for it. Oh, okay. The only way to to consummate a marriage is sex. The ceremony of marriage is just for the show to the public. The real marriage is the acts of, of sex. Okay, I'm a, I'm gonna put that up there when he pops back. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it's, it's having too much issue on how people do their wedding or uh, take their vows. That's between them and God. And if a church was willing to let them play that song in the church, playing in the background, I've heard every uh, just about every other wedding song. Why not? Let's see. All right. Okay. So let's let's continue with the rest of the the tutorial. All right. Here we go. Now, once she is ready, start by inserting one finger. So don't go in straight away with three fingers because the yoni wants to slowly get used to the penetration. So start with one finger. And once you're inside, I always recommend just pausing there for a few moments while you still keep on making out or maybe caressing her clitoris at the same time. But don't go in and start doing all the techniques right away. You want to give her body that moment to welcome you in and to relax around your finger. Now, after some time, you... Okay. This all come back to not rushing everything. Take your time, you know, um, because her body and herself got to adjust. You know, first, you know, get used to that there's a finger there and get used to the feel of it. And, and so she can get back relaxed to where she was. Okay, okay. All right, dirty vomit. I'm gonna mark that down. But it still goes back to them. You know, it may say something about them, but you know. But I have yet to know anybody that or that have played that as their um as the uh, song. Actually, I don't remember any song during the vows. Because everybody want to hear the vows. I know as the bride is going up to the altar uh, to meet her groom, uh, there's a uh, there's song playing. But but not while they're taking the vows. So, you know. But then again, it is a scenario. Okay. So, yes. The, uh, the not rushing. Take your time. You know, um, let her body get used to um to to um having a finger in there adjust to 
you want to slowly start to kind of make small circles around her vaginal canal. This is not necessarily going to be super orgasmic for her, but the idea here is just that you're creating a little bit of space and starting to activate all the nerve endings and the glands inside of her vagina. So you just want to make a few little circles while again, you're still pleasuring her breasts or making out or stimulating her clitoris. So there's that full body activation. And then eventually you want to find your way to the top part of her vagina. Okay, I probably stopped in too much, but yeah, you um hear that um is is um uh, activate her body, make her body aware, you know, by you know taking your time and and doing the circles, you know, adjustment, adjustment. You warming her up. You're not gonna um you, um be able to jump in right then and there, and hey, you got to do other stuff too. Mm -hmm. So the part closest to her belly, the front part of her body, because for most women, this is the most erogenous area inside of their vagina, right? Very close to the entrance, you'll feel a rigid texture at the top and that's her G spot. And if you put your finger all the way in, it will feel very mushy and soft and that's her A spot. And both of these spots tend to be very arousing for women when they're already in a medium state of arousal and can also induce squirting orgasms. Now, something. Hello? Hey, you're back. Yes. Okay, so Bertie Varman agrees with you. He says uh, it would be... Yeah, same people, same song. people. Right, people in their right mind would agree with mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with you or other people who think otherwise, but, you know, we live in a well, funny world nowadays. Yeah, well, um, people probably do agree with you. Since I've never um, heard that play in the background, and uh, for a vow, and in fact, actually, I'll be hearing no music during the vows. I, hear I don't understand how, I, well, this is what I don't understand. Mm -hmm. What kind of Christians do we have today? Some of you Christians, I don't know what's going on. Now, I'm a Christian. I was raised a Christian, mm -hmm. okay? And um, I understand the Christian values and stuff like that. And I've backslid a time or two. But I know what a Christian is. Some of you Christians, I'm not sure what is going on with you. You act as if you don't know God's word. You act as if you don't know what's going on with the commandments of the Bible. You start to arrive with all this wild stuff. Trying to, to, to entangle God's word into some BS. To try to create some kind of new narrative. I don't know why some God is doing it. You know good and well as a church going person and then conduct a Bible study that, that is inappropriate and that is non spiritual. To have a song like a ratchet song like that playing what someone is taking as sacred vows to God. Okay, you digitizing. Um, also, well, there's, nothing, there's nothing in the Bible that says anything so about the vows. In Am fact, no, yeah, you're still digitizing. I don't know, All my bars are so good. I don't know so what you are digitizing. I don't know, you're digitizing. Okay, okay, don't okay. The okay, part of the problem Am is I still nothing, digitizing. Okay, you better. Uh, the part of the problem is there's nothing in the Bible that says anything about vows. In fact, as far as we know, they don't take a vows. They li they move in together, and once they have sex, they're married. Once the virgin blood is spilt, it they marry. So there's nothing about vows in the Bible, or that um, um, that um, there's a certain way you're supposed to do them, or there's certain. So you're saying that okay? So you're saying that the vows that many women take during marriage before God 
They aren't real? Um, They weren't in the Bible. Well, then why are people... Do, okay, then why do so many people say them? Why do all of the churches... Some, something is wrong there. At a certain point in history, they... um. No, wait a minute. You saying that the vows are nowhere to be found in the Bible. Okay. If that is the case, then why are the churches, men and women of God, making people say these vows that don't exist? Because if the vows are untrue, right, then it makes the marriage untrue. Okay. Okay. The marriage as we know. But wait a minute. Is hold on. And then one more thing. If the vows don't exist, then what are you saying? For first of all, if the vows don't exist, then the Christian who's taking the vows should know that the vows don't exist in the Bible, right? If they if they take the time to pay attention, yes. Right. So 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 if they're taking the time to pay attention, then why are they still taking the vows, knowing that the vows don't exist in the Bible? Okay, it's a traditional thing. Okay. Then here's okay. another thing. Here's another thing. If that is the case, then why are people going to the justice of peace and to the pastors and preachers and the churches to get married in the first place? Because what you're saying, once the virgin of you know, blood is spilled, then you're married. Then that would mean all you have to do is have sex, which means that Yvette's definition of marriage would be right. Exactly. Ashley, according so to the then Bible, what are we getting ma- okay, so then what are we are married So the then what are we getting married for? Okay, so then what are we getting married for? We don't need to go anywhere to get married. All we gotta do is have sex. So basically, every man that's had a sex with a virgin woman is married no. to her. Ashley, every man who has sex for the first time. Is married to the woman they had sex with the first okay. time. Okay, and so the same uh, thing uh, for the okay, 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 but you see, that's not what it said. You said virgin blood is spilled. Virgin blood can be spilled more than once. No, it can only be spilled once by that one person for their own virgin blood. Okay, okay, okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me let me get a little bit more explanation. A man can spill his virgin blood once, but he can spill blood. many. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm not done. A man can spill his own personal virgin blood once, right? But he can spill the virgin blood of many virgin women. Yeah, okay, yes. And, and so by thing- that definition, well, wait a minute. So by that definition, those women who spilled their virgin blood for the first time with that one man are all married to him. <sighs> yeah, I, I guess technically, yes. Yeah. But listen, okay, well, then we have, wait, wait, no, we actually, have a serious yeah. problem okay. because there's yeah. a lot of marriages that are out here that we don't know, men don't know about, women okay. don't know about. No, women okay. don't know that they're married to. Okay, that's true. If we, if we were to do things literally like the Bible. Well, we're supposed to be doing things like the Bible because okay. we're Christians, right? We're okay. not supposed to be doing things not like the Bible. Okay, hey, if that's the case, wait a minute. If we're doing things not like the Bible, then what are we calling ourselves Christians okay. for, and what are we actually following? Okay, first of all, this is biblical. This is before hey, Christianity. Uh, is Brooklyn up here? Before... Yeah, Brooklyn. she's up here. Max. Uh-huh. Max. Can I? I'm speak trying to get her? a second opinion. Yeah, but I'm trying uh, to get never, a second you never, opinion. You never even heard my first opinion. You just ran. Uh, you just ran over me. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay, first of all, men do not spill blood when they lose their virginity. Are you a man? No. Then how do you know? Because they don't have a hymen. Are you a man? <laughs> no. Then how do you know what way we spill our virgin blood? <laughs> you don't have virgin blood. In, uh, in my case. Well, I'm going to have to agree with that because I never spilled any virgin blood. And because people can lie. Weddings came out as a witness that these people... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't say that because... 
if the woman is spilling her virgin blood, then she's married. Okay, yes. But if nobody, that's what the wedding is. Oh, now I'm starting to get it. Now I'm starting to get how these guys had multiple wives. Okay. Now I'm starting to understand. They okay. had sex with these women when they were virgins, and those virgins became their wives. Will you listen? Will you listen for a second? Because you, well, that's, you that's the a, truth, you, isn't it? Okay, listen. Listen. Okay. That no, there's something else gonna hold on. Yeah, yes, that's true. And and there's something else gonna Okay, because if nobody, okay, okay, say a man slept with a woman, she's his wife. He don't want to be married to her. He just wanted to have sex with her. He could say she wasn't a virgin or I didn't have sex with her. Who would know? So when they want couples to marry, they had this big sure. party to witness that they here. are married. Charlene, are you here? I'm I'm here. Mm-hmm. What's what, what's going on? Why are you trying to stay out of this conversation? Because I want to hear the the rest of the show. Like I, I, this is very good information. I was entertained. Y'all were here arguing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. So okay, Dave. So we're gonna have another show where we're gonna bring this argument back up and no, talk about no, it. No, no, but you're saying okay, so now I'm learning something here now. Okay. This is a this is problematic. Okay. How how marriage as we know it came about. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. What I'm trying to tell you is this is problematic. Well, There's a lot of women out there that don't know they're married to a particular guy. Yes, there is. And there's a whole bunch of men out there that don't so, know. So, exactly. So, there's a bunch. Right. So, there's guys out there that never thought they were married or probably married. Oh, and then there's a bunch of people who's committing adultery because God does not see divorce as legal unless one of them committed adultery. Wow. So, so this is so. If, so wow. that, that no, 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 um, that um, what they call that no fault divorce. That does not. That don't in God's eye, you're yeah, not divorced. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forget all that. But what I'm saying is, mm-hmm. this is this is a blockbuster because. Wow, there are men out there that don't know that they have that he has a wife or multiple wives. Depending on how many verses he slept with, and then those verses don't know that that's their husband. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, they think that's one of the reasons that women are psychologically attached to the guy they first had sex with, because technically, I mean, spiritually, she's married to him, so she got a bond with him. So, unless he dies, she's still in, in God's eyes married to this to this dude. She, well, then again, if he went and slept with somebody else, she could divorce, but she still can't marry. But you know, she's so it, I guess it could kind of. But she didn't say I divorced thee, you know. So she didn't say I divorce you. Uh, you still let like, you. you Spiritually married to that man. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I never heard. You know what? I've never heard a preacher preach that. Uh, I've heard a, a preacher preach that. Never heard it. Oh. Probably because I'm not starting a- to understand how these guys get on with these Persian wives. Or uh, why some guys don't want to mess with a girl that's a virgin. He don't want a wife. Wow, that's deep. That's deep. So you got all uh, these no, fools no, out here. Want no, these um, so you got these fools. So you yeah, got these dudes that want these virgins. Huh? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I got the So you got these dudes that want these virgins. Either they're ignorant or they want multiple wives. Yeah. Since they can't afford one wife, the last thing they need is multiple wives. But um, Dirty Varmint, if she's a prostitute and she's a virgin, 
It don't matter if he paid her or not. He's married to her. So if he, he's married, be a if he wants sex with a virgin prostitute, he's married to that prostitute. How can a virgin be a prostitute? I mean, I'm sorry. How can a prostitute be a virgin? If she never has sex. But her business is to have sex. Yeah, but if she's new to the business, she can be a virgin. That's why they used to have big auction at the brothels for virgin prostitutes. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Good, good information. Okay, boy. <laughs> okay, either the guy she been messing with are too too short, or um um you you don't you do know the hymen could could be uh, torn or ripped or whatever just by women doing every every regular day everyday thing. Uh, strenuous work, riding a bicycle, playing sports. Her hymen could have been broke. She probably thought she was um she was having a menstruation, a very very light menstruation, you know. But anyway, okay, Max, I need to get back to what I was what I was doing. We can have this discussion later. All right. All right, so back to the tutorial. Okay, wait, wait, let me get, so I make sure I'm marked right. All right, here we go. Something very important that I just said, these places will not feel arousing at all if she's not aroused. That's why you never want to start with fingering as the first thing you do. You want to make sure that she's already really turned on and in the mood so those erogenous spots will actually be activated and feel good to her. So there's a few different very, very, very effective techniques for the G-spot and the A-spot, but they generally work better with two fingers simply because there's more skin-to-skin -skin contact so more nerve endings are being stimulated. So you want to start first with one finger just making little circles on her upper wall and as you feel her relax and open up more, you can gently insert two fingers. Again, everything I will teach you right now for the internal techniques, while you're doing that, you still want to be stimulating the rest of her body. Body. You can grab her breast or simulate her nipples or her clitoris, but just make sure that you don't stop everything and you're just like mechanically doing something inside of her vagina because that most likely won't feel very good. So, okay, as you could, as she said, you don't stop doing everything else. You still kiss, you caress her, you you play with her breast. Well, you caress her breast. Um, her, um, her clitoris. You do all these things. You don't stop the, um, the other stuff just because you're doing one thing. So, so that's a that's a interesting take, especially when you in the two finger mode. All right, let's get back to it. once you have two fingers in you want to do three different techniques that work wonders for most women the first one is just to make little circles on the upper wall this is just slowly going to start to activate her g-spot and her a-spot and what you'll notice if she's getting more and more aroused is that it will literally start to puff up and kind of come down because just like you can have an erection when blood flushes in your penis and becomes erect she can have a mini erection in her g-spot and her a-spot as well inside a woman's body around the urethral sponge which is connected with the g-spot and the a-spot there's tons of erectile tissue meaning that as she gets aroused this tissue fills up with blood and will literally start to become bigger and become engorged with blood so that's a very good measure to see if what you're doing is working if you notice it getting bigger and puffier once you feel like she's really getting into it you can alternate between two different techniques the first one Yeah, I thought that was um, some interesting information. Uh, one is a way to tell that you're doing things correctly. 
Um, um, you can feel the changes in the in the G spot and A spot. I didn't know anything about the A spot. I didn't know it had a name. I knew about it kind of by accident, gynecologist, but I did not know it had a name, you know. But you know, the G spot and A spot, and that that when it's aroused and it gets engorged it, it with blood and stuff like that. So, you know, it's just some interesting things I've learned. Um, I figure maybe it's some things you learn too. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue on. This one is the come here technique. So just kind of like hooking like this, if she were laying on her back, you're just doing this motion. And if you see she doesn't react that much, you can put a little bit more pressure, but of course you always want to be gentle because it is delicate tissue. And while you're doing this, if you're kind of higher than her, you can do this and with the palm of your hand, kind of put pressure on her clitoris, if that makes sense. This is a technique that for most women is very, very arousing. But the last technique I'm going to share with you guys is Okay, well, I believe she's right on point on that one. Uh, my personal experience, yes, yes, that is very much enjoyable. You know, the the pressure on the clitoris while you're doing that that come here uh, motion. Now, this other one it explains something that happened to me. Um, I didn't have, I didn't know what was going on, but you know, I was very, very embarrassed about it. But anyway, uh, well, I I kind of knew what was going on, but I was kind of embarrassed about it. But anyway, we're not going into my storytelling mode. Uh, let's continue. Okay, you see, I'm not the only one learning something interesting, right, Dirty Vomit? All right, so let's continue on with the next part of the lesson. Here we go. is my personal favorite and works for so many women. And I honestly don't see it talked about that much. And that is the suction technique. So you wanna make sure your finger is well lubricated either with her natural lubrication or some natural lubricant. And you wanna put your fingers all the way in and press on her upper wall on her G spot and her A spot. And then you wanna release the suction. So you wanna kind of pull down and because you have lubrication on your finger and she has lubrication on the upper wall, it's almost like the liquids separate. And you'll hear this little sound like, and then you want to press back up and press back up and press back up. And if you're doing it right, you'll both be able to hear the sound because it literally hears like the squishing liquids separating from each other. This is such an arousing technique. And what you want to do is you want to keep a steady pressure with the suction as you're stimulating the rest of her body. And once you start to feel like she's really, really close, when you notice that the energy is becoming really, really intense, you can speed up a little bit and ask her to relax down as if she's trying to pee. Now here, as her lover, you can really help her. So give her cues to relax, to release, not to hold tension. Because naturally what happens in that moment is that for her, she probably feels like she needs to pee. So she's probably trying to keep everything in. But if you tell her to relax, that's actually the gateway that can take her into beautiful squirting orgasms. So as you start to feel like she's really getting to that point of orgasmic expansion, you can speed up the movement a little bit and tell her to relax down. Now, if she starts to squirt, you don't want to stop right away, but you actually want to continue for a few seconds. Because what I've noticed is that usually the squirting comes a little bit before the orgasm. So if you continue, usually the orgasm will become much more expansive for her. And one last thing I want to mention, when you're done fingering her, you don't want to just remove your finger abruptly because it can feel a little bit shocking to her system. A nice way to do it is to slowly release your finger and then cup the outside of her vulva with your hand as you keep on caressing her or kissing her or whatever the mood at that moment is and just cup her vulva for a few moments before you slowly release so she doesn't feel that abrupt kind of feeling like you're abandoning her right after she had a very deep experience. So these are my basic fingering techniques. There's so many other erogenous zones inside of the vagina like the cervix and the K spot and the P spot but in this video I just wanted to focus on the G spot and A spot 
because the truth is for most women that is naturally going to be the place that they're going to have more pleasure all right so that's the conclusion to the to um how to finger a woman uh that last part okay i, I had to find that out the hard way you know I didn't know what was going on, but you know, I was very, very embarrassed because the situation was not, you know, exactly what I wanted to do. Okay. 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 So, um, anybody learn anything from this? Okay. Let me, let me see. Okay. So you can get the whole inter uninterrupted a less um, lesson. Her name is Ida. Um, okay, I'm gonna put the link in the chat so you can you can see the, the whole thing for yourself. All right. Okay, without interruption. All right. So this is um, a, um, her lessons on how to finger. Okay. So I figure interesting um, for the woman, um, if she doesn't do it, or, you know, is a way to learn her body. And this is how she started. She started this teaching women how to understand their body and how to, uh, uh, let, let's just be honest, masturbate. Um, but the women were saying they wish their partner, their, their, you know, uh, the men in their lives, um, um, could uh, know how to do this, so that's why she decided to, to do this tutorial. Uh huh. Okay. Now, um, the next lesson, I was uh, kind of up in the air about doing this one. Um, it's about um the different arg uh, orgasms that women experience and stuff like that. Um, but you know, quite a few of us don't even um, uh, know some of them. We know like one or two because that's the one we're most familiar with. Um, you know, so you know, maybe you know, go ahead and learn a little bit about the different type of arg uh, um, arg orgasm that women get. You know. Let's see. So I figured that would be something else to learn. So, but you know, when we say we're multiple orgasmic, you know, women are multiple orgasmic, you is learning that exactly how many there that there are different types of orgasm. Now <laughs> was it was a new one, but I knew of some of it. Mm. Shall we proceed with the lesson? Uh, here we go. So the first orgasm I'm going to be talking about is the famous clitoral orgasm. This is the orgasm that's received most of the attention and that most women have experienced. It's an orgasm which tends to feel very explosive, very fiery, but generally doesn't last very, very long. I like to think of this one as a volcanic explosion at the level of your genitals. Because the clitoris is largely an external part of your genital anatomy on your vulva, it tends to be the orgasm that most women are most familiar with. But know that there is a whole other range of orgasms available to you. Next. Yes, quite a few of us know about that one. Because that's usually the first one we experience. You know, hey. Hey, the clitoris is out there, you know, and and maybe that's the one the guys are familiar with. Those that you know that try, you know, hey, clitoris, um, and enjoy. But hey, there's a whole other ones. Ah, uh, I know, I know. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. 
she's she's there's a but there's a bunch of but um so far she's my favorite to check out um she got a whole list of tutorials um and all kind of other stuff mm -hmm. all right now let's go on to the next one next we have the breast and nipple orgasm these orgasms tend to feel very heart expanding and can be a very connecting experience then we have our G-spot orgasm, which has also kind of received quite a bit of fame, not as much as a clitoris, but it's the runner up. And this orgasm tends to be very releasing. It can be very emotional and it can also be very juicy because it can be accompanied by squirting. If you're interested in squirting, I have an entire video dedicated to that topic and I'll link that down below. Now, if you go a little bit deeper, right beyond the G-spot, between the G-spot and your cervix on the anterior wall of your vagina is the A-spot, which stands for anterior fornix. This is one of my favorite areas, and it's actually really not talked about much. But for a lot of women, the A-spot is a lot more sensitive than the G-spot. These orgasms also tend to be very, very wet and juicy. It can also induce squirting. And in general, it feels like a full body opening. If you want to locate your A spot, you can simply place your fingers inside of your vagina and touch the front wall. And right at the beginning, you'll feel some rigid texture. That's your G spot. And if you go a little bit deeper, you'll feel more of a soft, spongy texture on the upper wall. And that is your A spot. Now, if we go even deeper. Okay. I used to wonder about that. Okay. But those of you, I don't know, whoever saw porn, you always see this woman squirting. I used to think that was just something to do with the movie. There's no way until I saw one where they did a close-up shot of a woman. And I was like, ooh, how, did, how, how should they able to do that? I've never been able to do that. Oh, well, uh, you know, until until I did. Um, just hadn't gone further enough. And, you know, it was kind of embarrassing because uh, why I was having an exam. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back to the lesson. Uh, we arrive to the magical cervix and the cervix is the jewel of the feminine body and cervical orgasms are profound spiritual experiences. These orgasms tend to take you from sex to spirit and be very, very healing and empowering. I have an entire video dedicated just to the cervix because it really deserves not just one video. I could do plenty more videos on the cervix. So I'll link that down below. So if you're curious to explore that part of your body, make sure to check it out. Then when we go a little bit more back, we can find our back door to pleasure, the anal orgasm. Anal Okay, I had to pause there. You know, we're finna get into okay, okay. Um I meant to pause sooner. The cervix um orgasm, yeah, is 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 a biggie. It's the one that's referred to as the big O. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a biggie, you know, and I didn't get mine till much later in, in, in life, you know. Yee ha! Okay, okay. Now we're going to get into the one I don't really care too much about. I don't care if people do. I'm not going to try to find out about this one. Here we go. Our back door to pleasure, the anal orgasm. Anal orgasms tend to feel extremely primal and earthy. This is where you can access your inner wild woman. A lot of women tend to moan and scream in a very primal way during anal orgasms. It's also a great orgasm to release shame or inhibition because our anus in general has so much taboo related to it that having anal orgasms can actually be really beneficial to shed any shame you may have. Next, we have blended Okay. Um, 
I guess I have to ask my friend, uh, ask a friend of mine that um that have done that. I, I think they could be right about that. You know, um, any shame she had about that, I guess, it got lost a long time ago. Um, but uh, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, not going there. But hey, there's nothing wrong with those who do. Just that I'm not going to be part of the club. But you know, let's get on with the rest of it. orgasms which is basically a blend of any of the other type of orgasms together so this is where things can get really interesting for example you can have a nipple orgasm while you have a clitoral orgasm or a g-spot orgasm at the same time as having a cervical orgasm and i like to think about our orgasmic capacities as kind of making a special dish so we can add in different ingredients and it will make the overall flavor very different so in blended orgasms we can start to really diversify the type of sensations we feel by blending different erogenous zones in our bodies then next we have energetic orgasms or tantric orgasms these orgasms can originate from everywhere and they don't even necessarily need physical touch. They can come through breath or through meditation or through intention. And this is where we really take the road from sex to love or sex to spirit. These feel like full body orgasms that don't necessarily feel extremely erotic in nature, but they feel extremely blissful on a deep, deep soul level. These are the different types of female orgasms by no means is this an exhaustive list, but these are the most common types of female orgasms. Now you may have experienced some of these orgasms before, some of these may be completely foreign to you. And I always like to say that orgasm is a learnable skill. So if you haven't experienced an orgasm yet, it does not mean that you can't, it simply means that you haven't learned how to yet. So through self-pleasuring and through experimenting with arousing these different erogenous zones, you can start to expand your orgasmic capacities. And if this is something you'd like to go deeper into, I have an entire online program dedicated to the female orgasms where I get really specific as to how to open up into each orgasm. And it's a very thorough program. It's called your... All right. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. I sent you a link that should lead you to her other things. But hey, part of the reason why I concentrate on on, on women, uh, you know, on us, you know, orgasms and 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 how the finger and turn us on and stuff like that, um, because there's a lot of Okay, I'm not gonna say that. There are men out there who don't know. You know, you know, I, I, you know, when I first came on YouTube, now it was funny to me. It was hilarious to me. Um, but the question was asked. Um, okay, um, some guy had mentioned that um, about spitting on a girl. It's like, what is this about the spitting? And he mentioned, um, um, um. If you don't have any lube, you have to spit. And I was like, and I was like, what you mean? Then uh, why are you not um, um, why are you not getting her wet? And the guy was like, what you mean? And some of the other old men <laughs> paid attention to it. And it's like, uh, dude, if you do if you if you turn a woman on right you don't need no lube she comes built in lube and she get wet and he was surprised and he was shocked he didn't know and i think there's a bunch of guys floating around out there who don't know all right i took notes now i can just find a chick one tenth as enthusiastic about sex as her, I'll be set. Okay, yeah, take notes. And hey, she got a whole repertoire. You can go um, click on her and learn some things. Yeah, uh, sometimes uh, and sometimes it's just the very basic stuff like the hygiene thing about cleaning the fingernail uh, underneath the fingernails, clipping them fingernails. 
uh, I, I, you know, I almost cringe when I see men with long fingernails. What is wrong with you? But there's a reason behind why I'm doing that, you know, because, okay, this woman said it better than I. I'm probably going to have to take her off of it. Um, but let's see. Let me find her. Okay, there she is. She said it better than I. And leave, uh, we're going to leave with something a little funny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So it's a little vulgar, but basically, yeah, I want the uh, um, sitting on face to be commonplace. Uh-huh. Uh, see, the problem with her video is that everyone wants to experience what she's talking about, but those experiences should be reserved only for those who are ready, willing, and able to have kids, right? Okay. Yeah. I think that's what Max is getting at. Yeah. But in the meantime, I don't think that, that you know, nothing wrong with, you know, with people, you know, trying to improve to make sure they pleasure their partner. Mm -hmm. Are they pleasuring their, their their husband? Are they pleasuring their wives? Trust me, there's a lot of videos on and on how to uh, um to um please a man. Are we getting on her that she shouldn't be learning um to um to uh, to please her man? You know, she should automatically know, or that you know. But um, anyway, uh, that's the end of my session of let's talk about sex. Um, I, I, I didn't intend for us to get into a conversation about marriage. My mistake was I was using a clip from a woman that was talking about a, a marriage on, on, you know, on um spicing up things in the marriage, not becoming complacent in 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 in, 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 the, in the marriage bed. Or don't don't use sex as a as a weapon. You know, that's that that is wrong, you know, you know. And um and and don't turn uh, 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 don't withhold affection um uh, to your to your husband or your partner, you know. Um, I, I was concentrating on, on, on that aspect of it. Um, but, um, I unintentionally brought up marriage into, into a sex conversation. Okay. I learned from my mistake. I would not be doing that again because those are, are separate things, but you know, just because, um, we have people that are, common law married or they been together so long they might as well be married you know or you know that you know i figured the stuff that could apply to marriage could apply to them too all right my bad learn from that i hope y'all learned some things or uh, as dirty farmer did took some notes you know help you out okay that little bit at the end i was just trying to be funny but you know it's right Let's um let it be equal. Let's make sitting on face be commonplace. In the meantime, you know, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> uh, do some homework and research. All right, everybody. Uh, peace, power, and unity. We're gonna end this right now. I got clothes to wash. I'll catch y'all another time. Uh, it was a fun conversation. Well, that's good. I'm glad you had fun. All right. Let's see. Where was I? Leave out with some music. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right, let's leave out with some music. All right, peace, power, unity, one, one. 
Um, I'll catch y'all another time. And I'm repeating myself. How many goodbyes I got to do up in here? I guess three of them. Mm -hmm.